I was working at part-time jobs away from acting. I worked for a, for a courier service, a messenger service, delivering scripts to studios and picking up contracts at someone's home. Rod Serling, I remember, and I actually became, you know, would have nice conversations with him. I'm not going to say we became friends, but he was a very sweet man, very pleasant, and, and he, we got to talking. And ultimately, um, a couple of years later, although it had nothing to do with him, I had a wonderful part on uh, The Twilight Zone, uh, an episode that is still played and, and uh, is referred to as one of the, the most significant that were done called The Monsters Are Due on Maple Street, um, about a town that some strange things begin to happen to and how uh, people get very suspicious and ultimately can um, you know, create great havoc among their fellow townspeople because the, the, the barriers of trust have been broken down. So you didn't meet Rod Serling while doing The Twilight Zone, you had met him? No, that was, that was before. And I only met him in that messenger context. And we would chat for a couple of moments as, as he was signing a paper or something like that. He was known to have sort of like a great sense of humor. Did you notice well, that? Well, he, he was terrific. I remember he, he lived out in the Palisades and he had a, a bungalow in back where he'd write. And I would go back to that... Um, office setup that he had and um, um, he, he was just a very kind of uh, accessible man. You'd mentioned that you had appeared on an episode of The Twilight Zone. I wonder if you could tell me um, uh, who was in it, who directed it, and any production stories you remember about it. Yeah, it was directed by a very talented young director named Ron Winston who sadly died at a very young age but he was really a kind of promising up-and-coming a director from New York, um, uh, Claude Aikens, Jack Weston, Barry Atwater, Amzy Strickland were the uh, major characters. That was a, a time in in television, and particularly that series, that didn't uh, go after huge name stars. These were all people who who certainly had good careers and worked a great deal, but. Um, Anybody seeing this now, maybe except for, well, no, I guess Claude Aikens and Jack Weston, a lot of people would still know, but um, weren't huge names in those days. And, um, uh, well, it was interesting that, that uh, uh, I knew um, a woman socially named Lillian Gallo, who was a producer and was at that time, I think, associate producer of uh, The Twilight Zone. And she knew of my coming on to um, studio lots as a courier. And, and because I told her that I, because you had a shirt, a gray shirt like this with a, with, a, with a crest on it, you know, that said Red Arrow Messenger Service. So when I would walk on a, a studio lot, I would put on a jacket or a sweater or something and try to be as anonymous as I could because I didn't want people knowing naturally that here I am uh, trying to put my sell forward as this brilliant young actor and I'm working part-time uh, as a messenger. So she was amused by that and um, she knew my agent and it, when there was a part that she felt that I was right for, she brought me in and I met a casting woman named Millie Gussie who was a very prominent and, and um, important casting person at that time. And uh, I think, because as I recall Lillian told me later, she too was impressed by well, uh, hopefully she had been impressed by, by my reading, but secondly, she was impressed by the fact that, that I, I was an actor who would, um, you know, take other jobs in order, order to support himself. And I think there was a kind of simpatico there for that. Anyway, I, I got this, this really very good role. I mean, it's, a, it's an excellent part on a, on a very interesting episode of that series. I know it was a long time ago, but do you remember how long the shoot was? Was it a week? Did you rehearse? Um, I think it was about a week. Yeah, we rehearsed, um, seems to me, a day or two, uh, and then shot for like um, three or four days. And where was it shot? Uh, at, at the old MGM Studios in Culver City. And it all pretty much took place in the same... Yes, it, it, they had a kind of small town street set. Uh, and that was that was where it was. It was it was um, uh, 
a town in which some very strange things began to happen. Lights would go on and off mysteriously and cars would start unexplainedly and the people began to get very suspicious that someone within their own midst was doing this. Uh, and uh, ultimately it, it causes such um, intense fear and ultimate hatred that, that uh, somebody actually dies, that someone is killed. And then the camera pulls back and you're in a, in a spaceship and uh, two characters in the spaceship are looking at some sort of screen they have to be viewing all of this and they say, you see what I mean? You see how easy this is? You don't, you don't have to uh, do anything yourself. You just have to plant the seeds of, suspe seeds of suspicion and they'll do it for you.